Hi, it's Jason Gorb from ThatShelf.com. It's day 7,655 of the 2022 Cannes International Film Festival. I'm sitting here, I'm in kind of a weird place. I'm this like bridge thing behind me uh, through these windows here is where the press hang out. This is the sort of back end of the palais here. Uh, if I swing over here, you can see, look, a bunch of mega yachts. Um, I think I mentioned this before in a few other videos, there's actually far fewer yachts. For some reason, I think some of them have actually been taken away, some of the regular participants. Uh, where I'm walking actually towards, again, just to show here, this is the Varda Theatre. This is where uh, this sort of um, semi-permanent, I mean, it's got basically permanent. It's a tent, but it's permanent, um, that they put up. Um, it was originally the South Swissantium, um, and has now been uh, named after Ms. Agnes Varda. That's actually where I saw Top Gun. Um, but it's also where I saw Elvis this morning. Uh, behind me, this is where the photo call uh, takes place. Uh, when they bring in the people for the press conference and stuff like that every day, um, that that um, sort of goes around. And you can see as I swing here, while I, before I actually walk down, the view that we actually have here of the uh, of the you know the, the Mediterranean, our, our lovely thing. It's it's. I, I will say this as as we're going on about movies and we're about to talk about Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, that uh, it is kind of amazing what you actually get acclimated for. I'm like, yeah, this is it. I'm in Cannes. I've been here for all of my life. Nothing else has changed. Um, clearly, every day I wake up, there are palm trees, this beautiful sunshine, and there's a Mediterranean there with lots of luxury places. I mean, it's repugnant, but this is what happens. You're just like, eh. Uh, I have to have another pen of chocolate today. What's what's the issue that we're actually doing here? Anyway, enough about me. Um, let's talk about the film, uh, which is the press conference with um, Baz et al. Um, it's a film about Elvis. It's a Baz Luhrmann film. You kind of know, or at least you expect what to expect, if that makes any sense. Uh, he's an incredibly musical filmmaker at the best of times. Um, uh, he obviously integrates um, popular music with uh, old music, as it were, more classic. Um, so something from an earlier time and something from a more contemporary time. Essentially, it's the uh, the mix of of um, dance and or uh, hip hop R&B rhythms with sometimes things that are slightly more either classical or classic rock or even early rock and roll. So, are we getting Moulin Rouge here, but with Elvis music? No. Are we getting a straight up biopic? No. Are we getting something nearly as sort of aesthetically interesting as something like, I don't know, um, Rocket Man? Uh, no, we're not. But what we are getting is actually an incredibly sympathetic look at a very interesting dynamic between two individuals, two creative individuals that created a symbiosis, as it were. Uh, that would be Colonel Tom Parker and Elvis Aaron Presley. So what's fascinating for me about how it all plays out is that for, for many, many, many years, uh, Tom Parker has been thought of as the sort of um, the iconic awful manager, the uh, the prick that's just stealing from his artists and like uh, driving him to drugs and death and all of that stuff. And Elvis, uh, uh, for many people, is thought of as this this pilfering for some, is thought of as either this you know pure um, a bastion, the king of rock and roll, the person that it all comes from. Um, weirdly, I think fewer and fewer people around that actually think of Elvis that way. And a lot more of them think of him as that he's the guy that was around before the Beatles, just stole from black people. Um, and that they'd much rather listen to the Little Richards or the B.B. Kings of this world or the Big Mama Thorntons of this world uh, rather than what uh, Elvis did. And that by the time Elvis shows up, we know that he has a comeback. We know he goes to the army. He has a comeback in 68. We know the Hawaii special. We know these sort of touchstone moments but there's no real love of Elvis the way that it is like for, I don't know, John Lennon, let's say. Um, this film does an incredibly great job of making me love Elvis a little bit more. Uh, musically, um, performance-wise, dance, and it does something, um, Bass actually mentioned it in the um, press conference, but I was actually thinking in a term. It reminds me in a funny way of what um, uh, most does in Deadwood. In Deadwood, the way that they actually work it all out is that they use language. They use um, something that was unique at the time um, of the era. I'm going somewhere with this, I swear to God. But they, they use something that at the time was um, uh, a, a, a unique parlance, which is to use very heightened, very florid Victorian language with cursing. Except, of course, at the time, the cursing was stuff like damn or heck. And that would have been the same as saying much worse four-letter words that we would, uh, we would consider now. I think of the... Uh, um, of, of the worst of the worst, and that obviously Deadwood does an exceptional job of making that 
happen. In other words, he changed the language used to elicit the same effect. So he, he took, um, in, in Deadwood, uh, script-wise, they actually do it so that the way that it all plays out is that it feels very much like um, you are feeling what it felt like to have these words uttered, even if it's not the same words. And Bass hinted that that's what he did musically with this, and I think it's absolutely, uh, it's interesting that we both echo that, that we have Elvis's songs twisted ever so slightly at opportune moments, never uh, shying away from the original intention of the song, and often we actually hear songs in, sort of in their sort of unadulterated form, but other times it gets integrated into hip hop, or it gets integrated in this, or that we have um, these rhymes put on top of it, to give a sense to contemporary audiences that have never listened or grown up or even know anything about Elvis, other than him being this schmaltz, schmaltzy guy that just shows up, that's... Uh, that's kind of remarkable and and it works it really does work it just gives you the sense of of a musician a performer who truly was thrilling now it, it doesn't go bigger than it needs to especially in terms of the dance performances the physicality the, the performance that he gives as elvis is astonishing um there there are moments that i was almost convinced that um it's the original footage with a cti head sort of put on top for for moments of performance there's there's this this raw visceral reaction to it which uh, Bass does a tremendous job of um, having his performance articulate. Be they um, the person playing um, uh, Little Richard or obviously uh, the, the main star himself. Um, as it all plays out, you are increasingly um, aware of the story becoming more and more personal. And in a funny way, most of um, Baz's quirks almost slip away. Um, it becomes, in a funny way, a much more conventional, much more straightforward film as it goes along. The ending is quieter, for lack of a better word, um, as we approach the end. Um, uh, and, and in some ways it's all the better for it. It's, it's as if all of the craziness and the intensity and all that stuff from the 50s is also going away, that it also becomes a little bit more conventional. So stylistically the film is very much um, following the same trajectory as Elvis himself, as that it just becomes a little bit more what you're used to, which is kind of the point, right? That he, st he's, he, he stops being that thing that um, just feels so groundbreaking and earth shattering for people who were not aware of the stuff that was taking place, not only in Tupelo, but in Memphis and in uh, juke joints all over the southern United States. The, the whole conversation about um, African American influences, his role, whether he's to be considered somebody who simply stole from those or whether he adapted, I think the film does a good job at it for people who are actually willing to listen to it. Oh, this is a very complicated character in terms of musicality. Um, something like Hound Dog is a complicated story musically. Um, I'm just going to throw it out here. Everybody should listen to the 500 Songs podcast. He does such an incredible job. It's a 10-year project. It's just amazing. I'm just going to throw it out there that everybody should be watching this, listen to the podcast from the beginning. But um, as is eloquently um, stated in there and many other places, there's a big difference between the Papoons and the Elvises of this world. There just simply is. And if you're blind to that, if you cannot, if you simply are closed off to the notion of what counts as just right, right, complete appropriation of taking a song away from an African-American artist in the same way that they were, they were collectively taken away from um, uh, original countries of origin and, and, and planted into the inexorably complicated and in many ways evil system that became the United States, if you cannot delineate between what Elvis is doing and what somebody who's just ripping off black artists for the sake of having a hit, um, you're just missing the nuance. It's as simple as that. And that's not to defend it. It's not to say that there's nothing, um, there's nothing worth discussing there. It's just it is much more complicated. And to the film's credit, it deals with that. It doesn't deal with it in a sort of prosaic or didactic way, but it, it definitely deals with it. It makes it part of the narrative. Um, Sure, when he goes to the church and you actually see he feels the uh, mode of the Pentecost, that feels very movie-ish. Um, it's not dissimilar to what takes place in Ray, um, but of course, very different racial dynamics to play. I'm not suggesting they're not, but in terms of just it following a general movie trope, it's there. 
But the stories are that that did happen, that he really was the poorest of the poor whites, uh, living in a community surrounded by African Americans, that that was, those were the friendships that he um, connected with, those were, that was the musicality that he, he um, proceeded with. And it is, it is unfortunate, it is simply pragmatic that it played out um, the way it did. And in many, many ways, um, uh, you'll find some of these artists um, indirectly benefited from the association, but that's not to say that they had anywhere near the level of financial success of someone like Elvis or the opportunities. And so he is a, Elvis is a cipher for an entire 10 year period of the early period of rock and roll. Um, the RCA deal, I mean, it's very interesting how it actually connects to the uh, Jerry Lee Lewis um, uh, documentary that played here, the Ethan uh, Cohen one, because obviously with Elvis's contract being sold, it allowed Sun Records to actually start um, international distribution and people like uh, the Roy Orbisons who would go on, but more importantly, Jerry Lee Lewis um, got the attention that he wouldn't have gotten if, um, if all the sun was, as it were, shining on, um, uh, on, on Mr. Presley. Um, the dynamic with um, uh, his wife is, is played out. This is certainly an authorized uh, biography. We don't get truly into the sort of repugnant behavior, the abusive behavior, the drug use. All that's shied away from. I don't think it's necessary for this film. If you want to know about that stuff, that stuff is knowable. It certainly doesn't make Elvis a saint, nor does it make him um, beyond reproach. Um, and it does make Tom... Parker, an enemy. He's telling the story. He's not the enemy of his own story. And they actually address the fact that we probably have misconceptions about all these people. They were very dimensional individuals at a time where the rules were just being written. And that is um, uh, pretty, pretty fascinating. I think the performances are great. Tom Hanks, um, uh, having seen clips of the real Tom Parker, Tom Hanks is doing an incredible job that people will still think is a little bit risible, is a little bit um, silly because of um, the way it actually plays out. But I liked it a lot. Um, I think he's he's great. He has he, he has an incredible empathy for this character, um, and that you sort you sort of feel um, you feel a man who has forgotten that he's actually lying to himself occasionally, and uh, I, I found that um, really really compelling. Um, and yeah, the musical performances are great. Um, the sound is good from the opening credits. Um, the way that they mess with the Warner logo is a lot of fun. There's so much to love about Elvis that uh, I think that it's, it's definitely something that is not only worth your time, but something that has to be experienced cinematically. I mean, to see this on the big screen is the way to go. The music blaring, uh, the images shaking. And I think that it is just long enough um, uh, that it doesn't quite overstay its welcome. Sure, it could be trimmed like all of his movies can be, but I really think that this um, does exactly what it sets out to do. And in, in funny ways, I think it is for sure Baz's most mature film. I think it's one that um, he didn't want to mess up. He didn't want to completely mess around with, like he has with other source material, um, completely twisting Labo M and completely twisting Gatsby um, to be his own um, version. I think by telling um, sort of this coherent, incredibly well-researched story, um, it softens some of his most uh, ostentatious tendencies just a, enough to make it entertaining um, in a much more journalist way. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it, at times camp when it needs to be and at times fundamentally movie when it needs to be. As I said, I could go, I could dive for hours into the actual music production. I'm fascinated by what they did in terms of some of the actual um, uh, amendments to some of the tracks to actually give it a little bit more punch, a little bit more zing to contemporary audiences while still maintaining that sort of flavor. So there we are. There's Elvis playing here at the 2022 Canada International Film Festival. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little tour. Obviously we ended up here, we're just like surrounded by the pavilions here, but I thought this little spot uh, with the water in the background might be enjoyable for you. Little taste of Cannes here in 2022. Please subscribe, follow us on social media. We would love to hear from you. Um, thanks so much and we'll see you next video. All the best. Take care.